I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're gonna to be talking about the big secret about avoidance. What is it? They're everywhere. <laughs> uh, no. You can't even spot them. It's hard to tell them. Okay, They're like the lizard true. people. This is true. Right? Mm -hmm. They're so in disguise. Mm -hmm. You can't tell them apart. Or can you? Mm. Actually, you can. But. You have to really, really, really get good at understanding attachment, mm -hmm. right? Why is that? Mm -hmm. What's the big secret about them? The big secret that we're going to talk about today is how sometimes those who are more avoidantly attached can come off as secure. How is this possible? Mm. What is this wizardry? This is a great question. It's like a trap, right? Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about it today because there's many factors and traits about the avoidant attachment style that come off as secure, especially if you are more anxiously attached, especially if you deal with a lot of self-image issues, um, a lot of assertiveness issues. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to get into it today. Well, I think the big thing that I see up front with the avoidant is that, you know, the anxious people, they're pursuing you. They're constantly calling you and texting you and they double text they mm -hmm. they just are impatient and so you can usually spot how they're so anxious right away whereas the avoidant initially doesn't do that mm -hmm. now they'll come they'll pursue which is the interesting thing mm -hmm. is they will pursue in the beginning but then they become like a different person as time goes on exactly and also they can be really matter of fact uh, with certain emotional things. They can state things very clearly. They have an incredible capacity for emotional self-control, if you mm -hmm. will. Uh, but really, is it emotional self-control or are they suppressing their emotions? Yeah. Are they, they avoiding sweep, them? Are they <laughs> sweeping it under the rug? Exactly, right? exactly. So it can really come off as this self-control, very self-confident person when internally they can be looking for the nearest window to break out of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, it looks very attractive mm -hmm. because you're like, oh, I'm constantly thinking about this person. I'm always wondering about where they're at, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They just look like they have it all together. Mm -hmm. And so they're not losing it. They're not getting emotional. And that comes across as really attractive because they're, you know, they're, they seem like a catch, mm -hmm. right? Like, they're tough to get. People right. like somebody that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes somebody that's easy to get. And a lot of what we're talking about today is also reinforced by society and societal ideals. So in our society today, it's very logic dominated and emotions don't always take the forefront. So when you see somebody who is more avoidant, who might be more logical, more practical, more, okay, what's on our to-do list? What are the next steps? That can seem very, very secure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it really does. And But as you get to know the person, you realize that they don't often like to talk about things, deal with things. They push things aside. They push feelings aside and needs aside because that's what's been done to them their whole life. Mm -hmm. And we see this particularly with men where men are raised to not cry about it, to tough it out, mm -hmm. to think about solutions and to fix things. And so this becomes this perfect ideal of this image of a man who's strong, unwavering, unmoved by emotion and can think clearly in any situation. Yeah, and I think biologically it makes us feel safer. Mm -hmm. We can stab that saber-toothed tiger if it comes after us. Mm -hmm. We can handle things when things get difficult. It just makes us feel like we're gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, they're hiding in their cave, depressed, <laughs> mm -hmm. and they don't want to talk about the saber-toothed tiger that just killed their best friend right. and the rest of the tribe. Right. Right? Exactly. The other thing that you had mentioned earlier that's really important is that sometimes those with avoidant attachment styles can come on strong in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So this is what 
<laughs> my friend had used this term and I thought it was hilarious, but emotional catfishing, <laughs> where at first they can seem super invested. You think, wow, this is a really emotionally available person. They're pursuing me. They want to have these conversations about emotions and they, they are asking me about how my day is doing. Mm -hmm. They're creating space for me to open up. Uh, they want to spend all their free time with me. So it can seem in the beginning like this person is really emotionally available until some time passes, until their attachment system is triggered, and uh, until they really let out some of those true underlying fears that have been there all along. Then you start to see them distant suddenly and it can, it can be jarring. It can feel like a different person. Yeah, it really does feel like a different person. And many of you guys talk to me about this on calls. It feels like I'm with a different person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because attachment, it's all about attachment. And this is why you have to really enlighten yourself in understanding these things because it's going to come up regardless if you do the work or not these issues are going to come up mm -hmm. with the next people that you date or with them if they come back so you just have to understand that for the avoidant they're not like this because life was great and they'll try and tell you it was mm -hmm. oh no my family's great my parents are great mm -hmm. but that's rarely the case it doesn't work like that okay they did it because their needs were neglected or ignored or their parents were stressed out or they had their own mental health issues whatever it was going on it wasn't good and so this child shut down and that's all they ever learned was to shut down keep it shut down don't talk about it don't think about it it looks it, it's weakness i get in trouble if i bring it up i get yelled at if i bring it up i'll give you something to cry about mm. stuff like that you know what i mean so that happens a lot this hard shell, this hard exterior, it's there because it had to be. It's a survival mechanism. And they couldn't show anybody if they were upset, if mm -hmm. they were hurt, if they were sad. Maybe they felt like their family couldn't handle their emotions. They didn't want to be a burden on their family. And you'll see this hard exterior, this hard shell, it's there because it had to be there. It's a survival mechanism. They maybe felt like if they were to show that they were upset or sad, that it would be a burden on their family or that their family couldn't handle it. And we see this a lot with first generation families. Yeah. And so we see that the parent is trying to establish themselves in this new country. They're trying to learn the language. They're trying to learn the systems. They're getting letters in the mail from the government that they don't know what they say. So you have this typical you know the the parents like trying to get the kid to translate what's on the letter yeah the and kid's a lot of, like i'm five years old i barely <laughs> know how to read it's true but a lot of times those parents have to work a lot because they have jobs that uh maybe have no education mm -hmm. you know like uh, i remember when i was in new york city a lot of the cab drivers i was i'm friendly i'll talk to the cab mm -hmm. drivers i'm asking them all kinds of questions they're my best friend by the end of the ride mm -hmm. and they're telling me oh i came over from this country and yeah i'm i'm living here and my wife is in this other state and i'm working really hard mm -hmm. and this one guy was telling me about how he want to come to disney world and take his daughter here so i talked to all these people and they're sharing yeah they have a job that they have to work a lot not make a lot of money because they're trying to survive but in this environment, it's better than where they were. Right. And sometimes you'll find that it's very educated people. I mm -hmm. had an experience working in the Red Cross in Norway where there were Syrian refugees. Mm -hmm. And these people were educated mathematicians, lawyers, highly educated people who couldn't find jobs in Norway either because their jobs didn't apply in the case of law. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different system. And so when there's children, when these are parents and their children see their parents struggling in this way, they can feel like my sadness right now can't be bared by my parents they're yeah. dealing with way too much if i were to be upset maybe they're tired maybe they're exhausted frustrated maybe they won't listen yeah you know maybe sure. there are times where they tried at first but at some point the avoidantly attached child gives up they decide that their parent can't help them yeah and they just become very self-reliant mm -hmm. i don't need anybody i could do this myself exactly and so because of this, they suppress their their needs and they suppress their emotions. Mm -hmm. And it can seem like they have less problems because of this. You know, you see people who might be more anxiously attached and they might be more sensitive to different things that happen in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You might see them vocalizing more of their hurt and pain and wanting to connect more with the avoidantly attached because maybe they express less of that. Mm -hmm. People assume, oh, then they must not have many problems. Well, and if you think about it, it's like, well, 
if I had all these feelings and I've asked 5,000 times to talk about it or tell you how I feel mm -hmm. and it doesn't get any kind of resolution, doesn't go anywhere, then you just kind of feel like, well, what's the point of talking about it? Mm -hmm. why, why do we keep talking about it? Does, nothing happens anyway. Right. Exactly. And they could also use some vague language when describing any vulnerable moments that they might have had or past hurts that they might have had. So it can also give you the impression that it wasn't that bad. And sometimes we'll hear people say that when, you know, when we ask about your childhood, they mm -hmm. say, oh, it wasn't that bad. I had a, had a good childhood, you know, nothing too bad. And so all of their emotions are always downplayed. And that can come across as, oh, maybe it's not a big deal. You know, they're, they're able to handle it. They're they can to, handle it. Yeah, they can see it. the positive in everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just handle everything so well. Mm -hmm. And you make, and you, you just kind of drawn to it because you feel like, oh, they can handle any problems that come our way. Mm -hmm. When in actuality, they're good at handling certain things, but not others. They're exactly. good at handling, like getting stuff done in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. They're good about like ambition or career or whatever it is. They can get stuff done. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then they really struggle with the emotional component of, um, of a romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. And this is also why it's so shocking for some of you who experience uh, a breakup from somebody who's more avoidantly attached. Mm -hmm. You might think, well, this entire time we'd never fought. This entire time we never had problems. This, yeah. You know, this entire time he seemed so well put together. Where is this coming from? Why is he shutting down? You know, uh, why is he reacting this way? Yeah. And the other thing is that in the beginning... Um, it, when they're excited about the relationship, it's easier for them. They they have all these chemicals released in their brain. They mm -hmm. feel amazing. I feel so alive inside. And so it's easy. And the fantasy of, oh, we'll get married and have kids. It sounds great until you actually have to do it. Mm -hmm. And then the actual following through is a whole different thing than the idea of it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, when they have to face it, it's a lot different. We also want to mention here that for certain people who struggle with self-image issues, with asserting themselves, as we mentioned in the beginning, sometimes even people who are narcissistic, sometimes people who uh, are even sociopathic, dare I say, people who struggle with experiencing empathy can come across as secure. Mm -hmm. and That's a big word you just said there. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Empathy. Mm -hmm. If you want to know the, the real difference, the secure person is very empathetic. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll hear people talk about the alpha male, all the alpha male. <laughs> the big difference between somebody who's truly an alpha male is the alpha male cares about everybody mm -hmm. when he can. You know, the whole group, the old person trying to cross the street. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That is not the, the selfish person who acts like they don't care about everybody. Mm -hmm. That's weakness. That's often what the avoidant does. Mm -hmm. But it comes across as alpha. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear that in a lot of videos and communities. Oh, you're so, that's the alpha thing to do. <laughs> no, it's the weak thing and the selfish thing to do. Mm -hmm. The alpha thing to do is to truly lead and show compassion and empathy for everybody. Exactly. And somebody who grew up with not a lot of structure, somebody who struggles making their own decisions, they can see a person like that. Mm -hmm. They can see a person who's very into themselves. It can come off as very secure. And because those with narcissistic tendencies, with even sociopathic tendencies, dare I say, although the sociopath is, is more isolated than the narcissist would be. And, and I don't think there are very many sociopaths out there. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember talking to Margaret about this a bunch of times and mm -hmm. she said she only truly felt like she met one in her life, wow. in her career. Yeah. So, and she said that made her the hair stand up on her arms mm -hmm. and everything. And she was just like, Mm -hmm. So I don't think there are too many sociopaths out there, fortunately, <laughs> right? Right, Because, I mean, that's extreme, extreme mm -hmm. uh, disconnected from anybody or anything. Mm -hmm. But the lack of empathy, it can seem as if they are able to control their emotions better, when in reality, that's not the case at all. Yeah. It's a severe developmental arrest. They don't have the capacity to care, and that's concerning. Yeah. And also those with narcissistic tendencies can tend to be very direct. They can be very demanding. And that can seem like, wow, this person really knows what they're talking about. They really know how to make the right decisions always mm -hmm. when internally they are a mess themselves. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So all of these are for you to really think about and consider when you're trying to figure out somebody's attachment style. 
the better you get at it and the more you do like the creative healing course with because that goes extensively mm -hmm. into attachment stuff yeah and the workbooks the more you're going to be able to see these things and weed out people that may be too avoidant for you or that don't look like they're going to meet your needs for a healthy relationship but i'm telling you you've got to really get good at it because people will present to them themselves as very different when you first are getting to know them versus two years in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is all for you to think about, to consider, to, to really critically ask yourself some of those questions. Is my partner really secure or are they just withholding? Are they really secure or are they suppressing? Yeah, there's a lot to consider, okay? And these are just some of the things that you will see with the avoidant and that is a big part of why they look secure and like they have it all together mm -hmm. when they really don't. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do it on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here if you need to talk. Just click on her name at the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.